What's going on everybody? Welcome back to new Hush Life vlog. I just wanted to open the new video and just say thank you to everyone who participated in the ultimate off-road package giveaway. It is now over, the entries are all over and we are going to go through everything, make sure everyone gets their entries and we're going to pick a winner and announce it by or before May 31st. So stay tuned for that. But I wanted to just welcome you to a new vlog. We got some good stuff to show you. Um, I went out on a shed hunt, the first solo shed hunt of the year, found some cool stuff. I want you to see the cool stuff and then I'll bounce back here to the shop to show you guys some of these and then uh, we'll carry on from there. But for now, just enjoy the first portion of the vlog. Thanks again for entering the giveaway. Thanks for shopping the store. We hope you guys love the stuff you got from our store. And again, congratulations to the winner who we will be announcing soon. Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Shed Tour. And welcome to a cell phone video. So kind of a bummer, my vlog camera took a dump on me. And I think the lens has just got so much dirt and dust in it on this these last handful of trips that it couldn't really handle it. So I'm on my phone, I just pulled out the vlog camera and it just would not focus. So we're on the phone. Which in some ways is kind of cool because we always tell you guys who ask, how do you get started filming? We're always like, hey, if you've got a phone, you can make videos. So I'm gonna prove it on this trip. Um, we're just gonna film all on the phone and let's hope that we get into some elk sheds. I, I'm i headed down to some desert country and by the looks of the sign I've seen already, there's definitely some bulls in the area. I've seen droppings, I've seen tracks. So it's not really a question of did some bulls shed in the area, it's where did they shed. My guess is lower elevation, so that's what we're gonna do. We got the pack for overnighter, and you know what? This is my first solo trip of the year, so bear with me. I know the audio is gonna be poor, but we're gonna tell a good story, and hopefully we find some shed, so let's go. Gotta love seeing the beds. That's always a good sign. Just uh, doing a little bit of weaving through these trees. Some good sign, it's just looking a little fresh, but still, always got the eyes open. Not a ton of track, so my guess is it's not really the shed zone unless you get some straggler. Well, I think it's safe to say I found my first elk antler. At least it looked like it. Oh yeah, that's an antler. That's uh, a little on the older side. <clears throat> there we go. Antler number one down here. A little on the chalky side. Huh. Probably want to pack it out, but just don't want to carry it with me everywhere I go. So I'll mark a pin on Onyx right here. Maybe on the way out, I can come snag that. Guys, I have been getting my butt kicked. Um, I knew coming down here wasn't going to be like finding stacks. I mentioned to you guys earlier, it's either going to be quality or not much. And I just laid eyes on my first elk shed. It's a left, it's white, and it's big. So finally, I've been glassing this lower country all morning with nothing, and this thing is laying right in the open. I just couldn't see it from my angle, too many trees. Let me see if I can show you through, this, through the binos. Well, I'm sure that footage was shaky, so I'll have to slow it down and put some stabilization on it, but it's a dang good antler, guys. Well, I could tell it was a good one. Dang, that's a sweet shed. How old are you? Holy cow, that's a big horn. Dang. A couple years old. Probably two years old. Big old floater G1. Extra point by the third. Pretty 
sweet burr. Man, I love these desert sheds. They stay in good condition, even though he's cracked. I promise you that thing is gonna be dense and heavy. Well, this guy was down here a couple years ago. Wonder what else was hanging with him. Oh, that's cool. Kinda got the floater G1. Oh, that makes it worth it. Whew. We earned this one, guys. Oh, I knew it was still going to be heavy. Look at that beast. What a pretty antler. This honestly could be off a bull that I have a, a set off of. It's got the same shape of burr. Now I'm wondering if this would be a year older than the set I have or the year after. I'll have to go back and look at it all, look at the pictures. But the thing that really screams it could be is kind of the first and the second and then that burr. So the antler's definitely gotten scorched out here. I was expecting it to be a little darker on the backside. So I might put that antler at three years old now that I can look at it, but it is a sweet antler and it really does have the shape of the bull that I have a set off of. And I think this would be the set from the year before. And that burr, look, this is so different from most any burr. And the brown set I got at home is long and skinny like that. And I really do think it's him. So let's uh, ditch the pack, like I said. We'll throw the pack in the shade. We'll go see if we can't find the other side to this. The year I found him, if it's him anyways, he shed both sides right next to each other. So hopefully he didn't go far. So let's go look for it. Heck yeah. Woo. Well, even after uh, people been in here a little early, and people being in here probably every single year, I just classed a white. So that's two whites that everybody's missed the last couple of years. Um, I got a good vantage point and there's some good lighting when the clouds come over. I like the glass when it's overcast. So I'm gonna pick it apart, but the white ones in some of these side hills, when you see them, they stand out big times. All right, I'm working my way to this shed I glassed and uh, I'm glad I marked it with the Onyx because you know, everything looks the same over here. It's kind of breezy up here today. It's nice for hiking, but it's killing the audio. So I do apologize, but this thing should be Somewhere right ahead of me, so let's go check it out. Walked in and walked above it. But uh, the pin was actually just about dead on. Man, another older one. Still slick white up high. Pink. Well, you know, if I was further back in here I probably wouldn't take that but we're struggling only got one on the pack so far so even though it's pink we're taking that I think that could make some decent dog chews up high before it gets down to the pink so we'll pack it out guys I have uh, been chugging along up this hill and it's steep just coming from the ridge I was just on about halfway up this ridge I stopped for a snack got some water and I'm just making my way straight up this face. And I looked to my left and boom, saw an antler. I was like, something's not right with that. It's cause there's two of them. It's a side by side set. I was just making my way up this. It's pretty steep. So I got my trekking poles and my face is basically straight to the ground. Heading up that way. Look left. Look at that. Full size right there, baby. I freaking needed that. Looks like there's some color on them. Oh, yeah. Nice. 
They are maybe two years old. Maybe, maybe three. But we will take that side by side set. Whew. That one's under the tree, so it's in a little better shape. You just can't predict where they're gonna be out here. From what I can tell, every year is just different. That one's in a lot better condition. We got them both. All right, let's pull them on out of here. Ooh. Those guys have been there for a minute. Like I said, I know that other one's in better condition, but man, the sunny side of this is roasted. It's starting to really open up with some of those cracks. Still fairly dense though. All these antlers are three or four years old that I've found so far. Oh, man. That one's in a little better condition. The inside's not bad at all, really. Goes to show you what happens when they're in the sun versus the shade. But a nice little compact sixer set. I needed that, guys. Right when I decided, you know what, let's just head to the quad. We'll shed hunt on our way over there, but uh, feeling pretty tuckered out and unmotivated. I know they're here, but man, I just don't know where they shed this year. Sweet set, guys. We'll throw these on the pack with the other ones and get the heck out of here. Not a big old burr on this guy at all. Just decent. Like I said, look at the inside of this antler that was under the brush. Still in good shape. All right, I uh, working my way down this ridge. There is some pretty decent sign coming down here. And uh, what's going on with this? I think I just found a side-by-side -side set and they're laying on top of each other. I still don't know. Well, I was coming down this ridge just telling myself, I told my girlfriend earlier today, I believe, that I wanted to carry five out to the truck. I told her I'd be super happy if I can get five. And I've got four on the pack. I did find one on the way in, but I don't think I'll be able to uh, get it. And yeah, what do you know? I just found a set on top of each other. What, what do you know? A set that's literally stacked on top of each other. That has happened, I think twice this year. That's crazy, twice in one year. Look at that. Just a little sixer, but those are on top of each other. What's that thing? Man, all these antlers are a bit old. I'm not in Brown Town, I'm in Chalk City, I guess, so. Huh, let's pick them up. Yeah, a little tiny sixer. Man, my other videos, you guys would have seen me just throw these in a bush and leave. <laughs> Not this time, we're taking them. Chalk chucker to chalk stacker, packing them up high. But man, I'll tell you what, in this terrain, they're in a lot better condition. Sorry, we got a horrible camera going on, but in this terrain, I was saying they stay in a lot better condition. Antlers this old, down in some of my other spots, they'd be chewed up and looking poverty, but these aren't too bad. Again, the sunny one got the worst of it. So, uh, yeah, we're still gonna take them though. Let's throw them on the pack and get out of here. Hey guys, I just gave away three tips to make you a more successful shed hunter. It is part of our new series, The 101. So Shed Hunting 101 is on the app. It is completely free, but it's exclusive to the app. So make sure you download the app and go check it out. Looks like we have another one right by this rub. Hmm. Look at all the tracks. Man, give me a brown, would ya? Look at all this sign. 
Where's the brown? Oh, they've been all over down here. Just a little guy. I might be able to slip that one down in between some others. That one might actually be a true hard white. Looks like it. Two years old at the most, but man, it's in good shape. But I don't know what's going on here. There's tracks, tracks, tracks. Look at these beds. Well, what do you know? I literally just took my pack off to do some glassing. I got six here, seven there, and right above me, you got number eight. Right there. They've been all over in here. It's not the first time they shed in here. Uh, looks like an older one. Yeah, not too bad. What am I in the Raghorn Ridge? Why there's so many tracks? Huh, number eight? Well, this pack is a little ridiculous right now. I was really wanting to get out of here today, <laughs> but things got heavy pretty quick. Now I think it's safest for me to find a place to sleep the night. I've got enough food. I've got enough water. So I think I might do that. Got a long four-wheeler ride out of here. And a long drive home in the truck. So no sense of trying to push my limits. I think it's safest if I just sleep the night. And then uh, pack this bag out tomorrow. Well, I think this little place will do. Hammock from that tree to that tree. Nice little fire pit. I'll dig out a little hole in the sand. And this is gonna be where we stay. Well, we've got a camp. Starting a little campfire just to kind of stay warm for a minute. Got my sheds out, got a peak refuel. I've got beef pasta marinara. Let me give you a tour of this place. Got the bag, a little garbage from last time. I do have another spaghetti uh, if I need it. I think we got eight elk antlers to camp. Little fire to keep us warm. Sleep system, poultry, um, hammock. Got the stone glacier bag, a sleeping pad, which really helps keep you warm underneath. Got a small stuffed pillow and a little beef pasta marinara cooking. Didn't take long to boil eight fluid ounces. All in all, a uh, fun solo trip. Trust me, I want to find browns just as much as anybody else, but finding eight or so antlers is still pretty fun. You still get that adrenaline rush almost every single time but i'm excited to get this big one home i know it's a match to not a match but it's the same bull i found brown this is his single from the year before so that antler there is four years old it's still in good condition and uh, i know i mentioned it but that's what i like about these desert desert antlers they stay nice and solid for a while go to bed early so i can wake up early and hike out of here the truck is way up there all right guys I'm in bed, ate some food, drank a bunch of water, built myself a nice little fire. It's actually warm. Even from here on my left side, it's keeping me warm. But it's only like 9 p.m. It's just getting dark now, but I've got nothing else to do. So I've set the alarm for 6.15. Still gives me plenty of sleep. I'm gonna sleep uh, for quite a while and then try to wake up early to uh, start my hike out of here. So hopefully it doesn't rain on me tonight. A little overcast, but most, mostly blue skies. Checking out from camp. Tomorrow's mostly gonna be a pack out, but you never know, we might get lucky and find a shed. So uh, checking out from camp. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, it's been a fun one. Just about to the quad. That was a pretty good push. I think it was two and a half hours 
wasn't very far for distance, but it was steep coming out of there. And now we're back into the snow and the mud. Hope you guys enjoyed tagging along. Again, I don't know if this will be shed tour, maybe a piece of the vlog, but it's been fun. Found some sheds. Always uh, ready and excited to go do it again. All right, guys, now that you watched it, you probably can get an idea of what I'm about to do. I'm going to show you the shed that I found next to the set that I was assuming was off the same bowl. Here they are together. That's the brown set. Found that guy in 2020. So if that's correct, this would be the year before. That would be his 2019 shed, the antlers that he had in the 2018 fall. That makes sense. They carry these antlers through the fall of one year and shed them in the next calendar year. So that's why I said I think this antler is four years old. Um, the dead giveaway, again, was not only the configuration and shape of the entire shed, but it was that burr. Dead giveaway for me was just the shape of that burr. Kind of that long and skinny shape like I told you and showed you in the video. And sure enough, that was him. All right, first things first, let's show you the brown set, which these things are heavy and dense. Definitely one of my better bulls, especially with that main beam. I think it's 57 on the left side. The growth from this set to the single I've got is pretty good for one year. So solid bull, that's the brown set. Um, I think this bull is mid 360s. But let me show you the two left sides together. Yeah, just holding these is uh, night and day on heaviness, which obviously this has dried out a little bit. But look at that sucker. I mean, he really, really grew from this year to the next. Nice bull right here. Um, but in my opinion, for one year of growth, he exploded this year. So pretty cool to see multiple years off uh, one bull. I've got a lot of different sets and singles off multiple bulls. I always thought it was pretty cool to see how they change year to year. There's an up close video of that burr, but that is without a doubt the same bull. All right, guys, thank you for watching my portion of the vlog. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, unfortunately, I got to get a new camera so I could start um, capturing more shed tour videos. I didn't want to put that as a shed tour video just because the video quality and the audio quality wasn't great. Uh, but if you enjoyed it, put a comment in the section. And uh, I'm going to bounce the vlog off to Matt. Sounds like him and his brothers went out on a trip and uh, had some good time. So enjoy what Matt's got to share with you guys. And we'll see you on the next week. Welcome to Kansas, guys. Uh, my brother and I drove for the last 14 hours. We had all sorts of events on the drive out here. But we're out here. We got about an hour until daylight. So we're going to go to where we have some hot leads on where there might be some turkeys so we're gonna go see if we can get one to gobble out of its roost and go get set up so fingers crossed never hunted kansas before so we're up for anything but we jed and i each have a tag so hopefully we can get lucky we got three or four days to kill a couple turkeys so let's roll all right guys just got set up we got two or three turkeys gobbling right behind us got our decoy set up The birds pitched out of their roost directly away from us and started working in the opposite direction. Jed and I sat tight for a couple of hours until we decided to get up and see if we can relocate the birds. Yards away, we have about 
700 yards till it turns to private. So fingers crossed they're on us. We're gonna get down and run down there and try and get within the range. See if we can make it happen. Let's go. Yeah, I can't see him. All right, guys. Well, we kind of left you on a little bit of a cliffhanger. The last time uh, we really talked to you was we had some turkey spotted at about 300 to 400 yards. By the time we ran down through the bottom and got up to them, they were just barely on to private where we could not hunt them. So we sat and watched them work away from us for a while. We tried calling to them and uh, there was four toms it looked like and I think there is eight or nine hens in the group. So it was a big group of turkeys and uh, Jed and I walked to this bottom all the way back and tried to find where their roost tree was to try and have a play this evening. We went back to our decoys and uh, took a nap. Honestly, we just laid there for the last three hours just trying to listen and just rest because we've been up for about 30 hours at this point. So now it has gotten very windy outside and uh, we're starving. So we're going to go try and find some real food. No more pop tarts or granola bars. So we're going to go try and find some real food and uh, make a game plan for this evening. So. It's kind of long-winded, but that's where we're at. I see him, I see him. He's coming right at us. He's big. He's 80 yards right here. Here he comes. See him? He's straight in front of you. He's in between that big tree and the one to the left of it. He's huge. Come over by me. You can shoot him. He's probably 60 yards. I've got him on camera. He's drawing right now. Swing and a miss. Jed got those turkeys to gobble right here. We got sat down in a really good spot under a tree in a shadow. I called and they gobbled and they sounded like 200 yards. So there's one more patch of trees in this meadow. So we start running 
across the meadow. Got about halfway across the meadow and Jen was like, wait, 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 I see them. And they were coming right at us. So we got stuck out in the middle of this meadow. And uh, one of the gobblers came around and I was looking at a back one, figured and he was about a hundred yards. And then Jed was on another one and I picked him up at the last second. He was to my left, so I swung over on him. And I think he caught my movement, got a little nervous, and I walk away. And I pinched a shot off. And it's a little too far. I think it's about 75 or 80 yards. It looked so much closer because it was just like basically in the wide open. And uh, missed him. Took off. I think that's that big flock of turkeys we were on this morning. So this is where me being a novice turkey hunter, I don't know what to do. So we backed up, laying in the shadows and just resting for a minute, hoping that those turkeys calm down and hang tight. The good news is, is there's a river and a big chunk of timber between the next big ag field. So I think they're somewhere between us and that ag field. Man, I got my opportunity. Oh, we just got a little aggressive or too aggressive. And that's not the best play in this open terrain like this. So lesson learned. Uh, day one, shots fired. So you're gonna come in from the south, up this, this road. You're gonna come up this road. Okay. Okay, and then that's where, it, that's where you're gonna enter. You go across a little cattle guard. So we relocated to a new spot that Jason had keyed us in on. We hadn't been there long and we saw a turkey fly over our head and land in a food plot Jason had just tilled up. We snuck up the old road hoping there would be a couple of turkeys up there to our surprise, there was five or six hens, but no Tom. We sat and watched these hens the remainder of the night as they worked towards their roost. At last light, we could hear some gobbles down the river bottom, and that gave us a good starting point for the next morning. With day one in the books, had some close calls and some lessons learned, we were stoked for day two. By this point, the gobbler had pitched right down out of the roost and was right behind the blind. We could hear him spitting and drumming, but could not see him due to us only having the front window of the blind open. This is where us being novice turkey hunters really bit us in the butt. We had this Jake decoy pointed right towards the meadow where this gobbler had pitched down. You could peek out a peep hole and see him strutting around about 20 yards just outside of view. I strongly believe if that Jake decoy was pointed in the opposite direction, this Tom would have come in, no questions asked. But for now, it's a Texas showdown, and the Tom is not moving an inch.
Holy crap, guys. Man, have we have we worked for that? So, day two, we came to this new spot, sat in my buddy Jason's blind. We sat here for about five and a half hours, six hours, and just freezing. It was like 20 degrees this morning. Jed and I both were nodding off and back and forth, and both of us snore. So, Jed was snoring, and I told him, I was like, hey, dude, go take a nap in the truck for a little bit. I'll sit here, and... Uh, the turkey comes in, I, I'll be able to film it myself, I think. The way this blind is set up right here in this clearing is it's pretty tight quarters. And I was just sitting here trying not to fall asleep. And I heard what sounded like a spit or a drum right to my left, where most of the action has been coming from the right all day. So I heard that, and I slowly grabbed the gun, reached over and turned the GoPro on. I was messing around with the camera. And he came like five yards in front of the blind right here. And the sun's beating right into the blind. And uh, I was pretty exposed. And he saw me and kind of peeled around the corner. And uh, we only have tomorrow left. And we still have Jed's tag. And I hadn't filled my tag yet. So uh, I leaned out the window and pulled the trigger. So I'm sorry, guys. Uh, you did not get to see that kill shot on that turkey. And that's just the way it goes. Especially when you're out here trying to film hunts and when you're a novice turkey hunter like myself You gotta take what you can get. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video so far We're gonna go take care of this bird get him in the cooler and then we're gonna try and get my brother a turkey So I'm super stoked huge shout out to my buddy Jason for letting us stay at his house and hunt with him and hunt some of his spots So thank you Jason and uh, it's been a pretty fun couple days like this is day one and a half and we've had some really cool turkey encounters so I'm excited to see what we can get for you guys and uh, I'm going to go back to where I'm comfortable behind the lens and hoping that we can get you guys some really cool tur turkey footage tonight and then we have all day tomorrow too. Dang. Good job dude. Thanks. Yeah I was telling the people Thanks. that uh, we've both been falling asleep snoring so I called Jed you go nap in the car, uh, get some rest, and then we'll switch. Uh, I didn't think it was going to happen this fast, but... I've literally been gone 20 minutes. Dang. Look how big they are. Look at the spurs on that thing, dude. <laughs> Those are some nice spurs. Oh, that's a big bird. Yeah, this is that turkey from this morning. He had like a couple missing feathers. Not the prettiest man in the world. Yeah, we had this turkey come within bow range, or shotgun range, I guess. That first light came out of the roost to about 10 yards. No shot there. This blind is kind of a weird setup. And then he went up on the ridge, was strutting up there. I called him back in, came back to like five yards, no shot. And uh, we kind of spooked him trying to lean out the window and shoot him. Same thing happened again, but he came in on this side. And I was able to get a shot this time. It's day two. I just killed my turkey. Now it's Jed's turn. Uh, he's... He's got the gun now. I'm back to where I'm comfortable behind the camera. And it's been a while since we've heard or seen any turkeys. So we're just going to sneak up this ridge line and do what we do best, and that's glass. We're going to try and locate something. So fingers crossed we can find a, another gobbler tonight. So let's roll. Well, that didn't take long. We uh, just started up this hill. And I look back across this valley. We just glassed another group of turkeys. Looks like there's a few toms with them. 
Um, we just gotta double check it's on a place that we can hunt. But we're gonna start checking onyx and then we're gonna ease our way down through this bottom stake covered and try to come up and call them in or cut them off, one of the two. But they look to be up there just grazing, so we'll see. But yeah, that didn't take long work, so. Did you get it? Yeah, go get him. <laughs> Dude, that was so sick. They came right at us. Heck yeah, dude. Not mega, but dude, that was freaking fun. Blew his tail off. Holy smokes, guys. Like we said back there, we just got done taking care of Matt's bird from this morning and like 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes ago. <laughs> like literally 
15, 20 minutes ago, and we just started hiking over to a ridge that we had seen a couple toms and some hens on that this morning. And I looked clear across in this green meadow back here. I could see turkeys and I could tell a couple of them were toms. And uh, so we bombed clear across probably seven, 800 yards. Got on the edge of the property we can hunt, literally right on the border. And uh, I could see them there about 100 yards. And Matt started calling and they all strutted up, but I thought they were gonna stay there. So we were planning on getting a little closer, but they ended up starting to come. And... Well, that does it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this turkey hunting show. It's a little bit different for Jed and I to come out here and try and hunt these turkeys um, like the Midwest hunters hunt them and not more run and gun style without a camera uh, like we do back home in Utah hunting timber birds. We hardly ever take a camera and it's kind of every man for itself. If you see a turkey, you shoot and no questions asked. And that kind of bit me in the butt out here. Uh, the stuff's a little more open and brushy than what I'm used to. I attribute the first one to the turkey being too far out of range. It was upwards of 80 yards, which is not super ethical, but we didn't range it and I just thought I had a shotgun and I'm gonna shoot. Third time was the charm and unfortunately it wasn't on camera for you guys. I was so frustrated with yesterday's misses that when that Tom came in and then went right out of frame and started to kind of head out, I leaned out the window of the blind and shot him. I had a shot and it was under 40 yards. So that's kind of what happened. And then literally 20 minutes after we got done taking care of my bird, we came up on this ridge. Jed glassed 800 yards away, glassed up a group of turkeys and we made a beeline. We made an awesome game plan on Onyx to run up this fence line and to try and get eyes on them without them seeing us. And we were able to do that. And I hit a call and Jed kind of held up his fan and they came, uh, it got their attention, they started strutting, and then we backed up about five yards and they came running up the fence line, a group of five or six birds, and uh, Jed found the biggest one and shot him, and I was able to get that on camera for you guys. So we learned a lot, and I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, make sure you leave a like and a comment, and um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you guys next week. See ya.